to get right on into it. It's going to be Kaina versus Lorez. We've got the Lucian on Kaina's side. We've got Lorez sticking with Akaya. That's what he has been playing as of late at Sobralo number 69. He did also pull out the Koji, and we didn't actually see Kaina pull the Lucian out. He's playing a Suri and he even played a what? And Isaiah, what a wild choice there. Dude, he's, he's Kaina. You're seeing Kaina stuff. It's 16 seconds into this game, and he's already doing the stuff that he was doing against Luna. He's doing it exactly the same, and he's doing it so consistently over and over. Lorez fighting back with the spear. He is going to have solid range. Whenever Kaina has guitars, it's basically like, get away from me. Well, now Kaina's over to the blasters. No dares thrown out. Just gonna get a side light, getting some good damage put out onto Lorez. Lorez, there's a burn spot dodge from Kaina, but Lorez wasn't ready for the reaction. I don't think he really had the range at that point to pick anything up. Like, maybe the D-Light, but I'm not sure, because Kaina was pretty far away from him after that side light. There's the KO off the top. Kaina is very much in the red, even though Kaya does have a little bit lower strength. That may not be as much of a problem here on Brawlhaven. Same story goes for Kaina, though, but he has a signature kit, a very strong signature kit as well. And we've been seeing him use very well, but really it's been a lot of D-Light side airs, D-Light recoveries, or Qatar recoveries as well for his KO options. But Lorenz with the downlight recovery is going to clean up that stock count. I do believe Kaina's thrown out a couple of those Qatar down sigs as well to finish off stocks, but for the most part, like, in terms of sig conversation, it's all about that bow down sig for the Kaya. Hoping to juggle with the neutral airs. Kaina... Again, the D-Light into that turnaround neutral air. The reason he's turning that neutral air around is because the back blast ends up coming out first between those two. So by turning that around, you get that hitbox out first. That's going to be a D-Light yep. recovery. I thought he might have gone for the D-Light side air just because he's so good at knowing when he should go for recovery versus when he should go for side air based on positioning and based on damage he has on his opponent. I think almost every single time he's gotten the downlight in that spot where like someone's peeking up over the corner, he's gone for the recovery. Nice double downlight there, double recovery as well. Kind of making me stutter with how much he's doubling up. Man, he's so good at turning around those recoveries as well. He'll send his opponent off stage. Obviously, his opponent wants to get back on the stage. If he recovers high, kind of turns around, hits that recovery. If he doesn't recover high, then kind of throws out the recovery and doesn't get hit because his opponent is nowhere near him. Does get hit by that unarmed recovery. Thought a second one might be coming. That's why he threw out that down air to stop that. Gets the side air basically from the right side of the stage. And that is game one. It's a two stock for Kaina here. Kaina nods his head. He's like, yep, this is going the way it's supposed to go. You played incredibly well, Lorez, but uh, it's my time to shine. Now, Kaina and Lorez are 2v2 teammates as well. Kaina has played with a lot of different people. Lorez has as well. That's kind of a South American thing where they all play musical chairs or square dancing with each other and kind of change partners around all the time. We see him swapping back over to the Pearl skin that he was using previously. But that means that Lorez has certainly learned a lot from Kaina. And Lorez is an extremely young player. Kaina's, I think he's about 17, maybe 18 now. Lorez was 13 at Midseason Invitational. I think he's 14 now so at he is best. an incredibly young player and you can already see how strong he is you know, meanwhile though kind of catching the double side like it's a nice nair goes for the dare read there as Lorez dips underneath them but manages to position correctly back-to-back -back in lights using the range that lateral range left and right to try and contest kind of he has the lead here but he's starting to get pieced up kind of is also playing that lateral game left and right with those poking side lights now he's got the Qatars. Good spacing into the side sig to punish the whiff from Lorez. Going to juggle up his weapons, going back, of course, over to the Qatars. That's been one of his main damage builds, but I think Taz has said it earlier, is he also plays a really well-rounded Lucian. You'll have games where all the damage is on Qatars. You'll have games where all the damage is on Blasters. You'll have games, nice dodge to get through there. Nice cleanup from Lorez. You'll have games where it's perfectly split between the two and everything in between. Well, now things are even between the two of them. Lorez with that fantastic edge guard denying this weapon pickup from Kaina. Great coverage, doesn't get that down light, but he's still keeping the weapon away from Kaina. Kaina finally picks up a pair of guitars. Lorez playing the range game. He's playing it so well. Tried to find that side air. Didn't have enough range on it just yet, but he hasn't been punished for any of these side airs that go out. He got behind Kaina. There's the D-Light into the recovery. He has such a lead here. Laura's is looking solid right now. Grand pound thrown out. Lorez misses the punish though. Down sig, just a punish of a side light down light. There's the D light into the side air, sending Lorez close to that blast on the immediate answer back. There's the side light. There's the spot Ooh. dodge. He tried to go for the read in the other direction with the D light rather than waiting for that spot dodge to come out. Oh, the Sair beating nice. out the recovery, but Lorez beating out Kaina. 
getting him to his final stock. I'm a little bit surprised that D-Light into the recovery KO'd on the unarmed kit. That's why you see Kaina almost always going for the D-Light into the gravity cancel neutral heavy, because that's going to have a little yeah. bit more power on it, a little bit more strength, a little bit more force to really make sure you get that KO rather than just sending your opponent near the blast zone. It's the most efficient way to vertically knock out for unarmed players. And South America as a whole, like their region is really good at doing that. And it's not easy, which is why you don't see a lot of other people going for it as consistently as a player like Kaina does. There is a tight window in there. Oh, Ooh, Kaina! Read the dodge back. Got the double down light. Goes for the down sig. Lores comes back up. Kaina's got great damage put out onto Lores. Lores had a lead earlier in this one, but Kaina has completely deleted it. Lores is starting to play a little bit defensively, though. He's really using that range that he has with the spear, making sure to back up so he's at the perfect effective range compared to Kaina's. Katars, but the Blasters are coming and out, finishing that one up with the side air. And Lores, an amazing effort that game, but it still wasn't enough. Even with the lead he had, it still wasn't enough. I swear, dude, Sunday Kaina is different. We talked about Kaina not being able to close. He wasn't able to do it at BCX. He struggled with it several times on Friday, which is why he finds himself in the elimination bracket now. But today... Today, the K in Kaina stands for closer. He, well, that's not how you spell close, but he is definitely... It does it in Portuguese. Oh, okay. Closing or out... Or in Mortal Kombat stocks. Universe. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's a more accurate one. But he is definitely closing out those stocks. I mean, there was a one damage difference, but the health difference in those final stocks was significantly in favor of Kaina. Now we're here into game number three. Kaina's one game away from knocking Loris out of the game. We're out of the tournament. And it's interesting, between the two Kai's that we've just seen, Impala and now Lorez, is Impala was all bow. Meanwhile, Lorez, really the best he did last game was off the back of that spear. So that's showing how differently you can play this legend, how you can use your own unique skill expression. But now we're actually seeing the bow. So we're seeing Lorez play really well-rounded as well. Grabs the neutral signature. First stock going the way of Lorez here in game three. And yet he still wants to stick with the bow. One thing that worked really well for him against Luna was Forcing that 50-50 goes for the sideline into either a side sig or a down sig, and forces and he was forcing Luna to make an option. This time he's not even thinking about that as he's trying to play the spear out and kind of gets the recovery. Gonna have his choice of weapons. Likely gonna stick with those Katars. He's able to chase his opponent so well. He's using everything that Lucian has that is unique to this legend to really show Where's why he's playing him. Look at this string potential that kind of has. He's able to do it against the best players in the world. Footsie game coming out. Nobody wants to commit. They are pretty even. Kaina finally goes in, grabs two piece. Nice side airs. Kaina sweat beating here. Still manages to get the wall touch. Loris can't deny the down sick thrown out, but the down sick from Loris is the one that connects. Sweating again. He's not able to get back over. He even shook his head on that one. Maybe a little bit frustrating to fall there, especially because Loris is only in the orange. Definitely wanted some more damage if he was going to fall. Okay, there nice. we're starting to see the 50-50 come nice. out. Another down sig. Three. Oh, he threw it out, but kind of this time stays high. He changed it up just a little bit by delaying it, and then he throws it out there. Oh, going for it again. Kind of with the side sig to punish. Loris learning his lesson a little bit there. He's like, you know what? Okay, maybe I did a couple too many. I don't know. He's coming back in with Bo. We'll see if he tries it again. He does have about 100 damage, maybe 85 damage lead now. Getting kind of really close to the red. He does actually have him in the red. D-Light in the neutral air. Send him off screen. I don't know if one more might do it. Recovery should. Ooh, that's a punish. Okay. Loris, okay, he's, he's be just only doing heavy Yeah, buttons. he's really got to be careful. I feel like I'm seeing shades of kind of oh, oh. at BCX where he starts throwing out those signatures, getting a little bit too reckless. Oh! Kind of gets underneath it. Doesn't get the dodge. And Lores finds the side air. He's going to hold on. We're going to game four. Lores denies the 3-0, keeping himself in this. It was looking a little bit scary, looking a little bit wobbly towards the end of that one. But he still kept the control. And now you see a almost completely bow-dominated game coming out from Lores' is Kaina. Lores' is Kaina? Lores is Kaya. <laughs> Man, that's well, tough. Uh, well, maybe it's just Lores is Pearl, because uh, that's the that's the crossover he's on. That's it, true. I should it, say that. That'll yeah, make it easier. That make, yeah. Definitely helpful. But we're going into game number four. No character swaps, no skin swap on the side of Lores. He did swap over to the Pearl for game number three, and it's the thing that I guess kind of helped him out a little bit. 
Now Kaina's gonna start this one off with the first weapon. That second spawn was sitting there for a while. Kaina was able to add up quite a bit of damage by just playing around it, using it as a trap. Already has Lorez in the orange at 100 damage. Ooh, Kaina a little bit quicker with that Katara sideline. Beats out Lorez. Lorez chasing high with that recovery, ends up getting caught for it. Kaina's getting some good errant hits onto Lorez right now. Here's the sidelight again, that down sig coming out. Kaina's really not falling for it as much anymore as he was previously. Not only that, he's also flying punishes on it. Ooh, Lorez underestimating how far that D-Light was going to reach out. I think he was maybe a little bit too hasty to try and punish oh. it. Oh, oh my gosh! The weapon toss into the pickup, into the weapon toss. All of that coming out. Kind of essentially juggling his own weapons by bouncing them off of Lorez's face. Ooh, but Lorez brings this one back. Hits the side air onto Kaina in the offstage. Going to juggle for a bit, but yep, definitely going to be all about that bow. All about that bow, that bow, that bow. No spear. I don't. I don't really know that song very well. I think I've only heard it on like commercials. So sorry, everyone. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have done that. I, I take it back. That was great. No, I, I think uh, Megan Trainer is filing the DMCA claim right now. <laughs> oh no, I hope not. All right, over to the spear though. So not gonna follow along with the song as okay. Kinda hits the down sig. Loris has some movement. Gets above Kinda. The real question is which which one of these players is mother? because the other one has to listen to them at the end of the day. Okay, D-Light into the side air. Didn't try to risk anything because he knew the dodge wasn't burned, so he couldn't get the double D-Light for free. Okay, I like that weapon toss there. Just trying to keep some pressure going. Lorez knows he needs to win this one. Goes for a big side sig read there, kind of falls down, hits a side air, puts Lorez off stage. How's he gonna get back up? Okay. Oh, he's, I, I was expecting a side light from kind of. There he throws one out to kind of punish that down signature that came out from Lorez. Ooh. Oh, he's slow on that punish. It seems like he doesn't quite know how to do it. That doesn't really surprise me since maybe other than Lorez, how many other Kaya players are there in 1v1? So maybe he doesn't feel comfortable about being able to get above, around, and behind it by the time Lorez is finished charging it. Oh, Lorez with the double end light. Yeah, it is tricky because you can hold that. Lorez does give the recovery to Kaina and potential here for that game number five but like we were saying like that spear down sig like you can change up the timing of how long it's active nice side air if Lorez pushes this to a game five uh man i, I i'm i'm seriously so proud of Lorez. i have so much respect for Lorez as a player and it's only grown seeing him here at dreamhack san diego i think everybody around us also has that same idea Ooh. as well they're both they both want it so bad off the top but they're both yep. in the yellow not quite yet edge guard set up Lorez able to still punish off. the attempt oh. at landing the ground pound we have a game five Lorez takes game four clutching it out Saw the sweat beads, knew he was running out of actions and maintained the pressure perfectly for that ground pound to connect and force a game number five. Lorez is incredible. He's truly an incredible player. He has leveled up so much this weekend. What a ground pound pickup there. And you see a game much more five. even split between these two Three, weapons. It was like two, 172 on the spear, 297 on the bow. Good mix of weapon usage. We're getting into game five. Small Brawl Haven. Now, one thing Lorez cannot get too confident, because if he starts to get a little bit too confident, and if he starts to feel himself a little bit too much, I think Kaina is going to take him apart. It definitely is not over until it's over, but Lorez has an opportunity here to change the history books. He's lost every single set against Kaina, but here today, he's in game number five. And it would be wild to win this set because he went down 0-2. He would be getting the reverse three against like kind of the de facto best player in all of South Ooh. America. But kind of wants to make sure that does not happen. He's opening this one up huge. He's only in the later stages of yellow. Meanwhile, Lorez is very much in KO damage. That neutral air sending kind of into the orange. D-Light into the recovery. KO off the top. Huge lead for kind of. Clean plays from Kaina. Was not going to drop that down light recovery. He's got some solid health, too. Denying weapons. Lorez hoping for a weapon spawn soon. You see him running forward towards Kaina. Dude, yeah, look at Lorez's movement to get in and around. He really, honestly, he was, he's getting hit a lot more when he has the weapon than when he was at weapon disadvantage. Oh. Not able to grab that KO because of that 45 degree force vector. Nice landing side air. Oh, not going to have enough range oh! for that. Oh, Kaina. Oh, no. That's so brutal. 
Down Sig misses, kind of still getting some punishes though. Lores has taken a lot of damage here. Pogo, not enough. Goes he's high. Gotta, he's got to oh. find the stock. Okay, he finds it right here. He's very much in the red. And again, we're on small Brawl Haven. Even though Kaya has solid defense, that starts to go away a little bit when you look at being on small Brawl Haven, those close blast zones, especially the way that Kaya is able to find the signatures exactly like that. Up that side, Signature cleans it up. A full stock lead for Kaina. Sticking with the Katars as Loras is unarmed right now. There's the weapon spawn, picks up the spear. Can Loras bring this one back? This would be such a clutch. Sidelight in the in light. Turnaround recovery as Loras is recovering back to the stage. In light again. Doesn't get the jump there, but does get the cool. second one. Goes for the GC Sig all the way up there. These Katars are going crazy right now. But oh. I, I gotta see the grab. I can't wait to see the grab. Oh There's so God. much damage being added up on top of Lores and very little being added up on Kaina. Decides to swap Katar as the last pair. We're getting a little too bloody, but Lores starting to find some damage, but he gets disarmed. Weapon spawn in favor of Kaina. Lores goes in. What? what? And the taunt early. Kaina, what are you doing? I get that you're still mostly in the lead, and it's very unlikely that you would lose this game, but what are you doing, my brother? He oh, just tried to do is playing with him. the dirt. There's the recovery. There Kaina is. takes it 3-2 over Lores, and he is going to be the final representative for South America. Kaina is guaranteed top three. Moving on into the elimination finals. Big hug from two good friends here in the South American region. That is going to be an incredible fourth place finish for the very...